here we go. There, is, there are typically two big ideas about death. The one is the mainstream legal death or clinical death where you ha have no heartbeat. You're dead in a very clinical sense. You, can, you no longer have any legal control over anything. You've taken off life support, blah, 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 that type of thing. That's not really metabolic death, though, from a medical standpoint, because there's still metabolic activity going on. In between dying metabolically and dying clinically, there's still life. So dying metabolically is referred to as information theoretic death. That's the point where within your brain, within cells, within neurons, everything is decayed to the point of no regeneration and within neurological tissue, no more thought processes, no more memory. You can't store or retrieve anything. So if you can get in there and slow down exponentially, that metabolic reaction, the metabolic reactions going on in between clinical death, which isn't really death, and information theoretic death, then you can preserve tissue for a long period of time. Now, it's a scientific fact that for every 10 degrees Celsius drop you have in temperature, you slash metabolic desire, metabolic need, metabolic drive by 50%. Desire was a very bad word there. Metabolic need by 50%. So extrapolate that mathematically, get all the way down to liquid nitrogen temperature, which is about 195 degrees Celsius, and you've slowed it down to where what takes 60 seconds at normal body temperature would take 24 million years to take place at really, really low temperature. What's the usefulness of all this? Well, there's something called chronics, which is a part of cryobiology that seeks to preserve tissue by keeping it very, very, very cold, and therefore alive, but in a very slow metabolic state. Well, this sounds great, right? We can just throw grandma into the freezer and bring her out in 30 years, or we can put your kidney in the freezer and bring it out in five weeks when you need the transplant, that kind of thing. Well, it doesn't really work that way. You can't just throw things in the freezer. Here's why. You get ice damage. You've got oh, to well, <laughs> I'm sorry. You have to. A, B, B. No, 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 wrong button. Help. It's in the middle. Oh. A, B, mute. Okay, you get ice damage. Look what happens. Normal warm tissue, it's great, it starts to get colder, there's ice in between these cells. You freeze it completely, the cells are crashed. They don't, they don't freeze from the inside, they freeze from the outside. This ruins everything. Here's ice damaged tissue. You can see the ice inside it is terrible. So how can you keep things cold and preserve them without killing all the cells? We have to do something called vitrify them. Now vitrification is a process, it's a big word that simply refers to introducing chemicals called cryoprotectants into tissue that allow you to freeze it at a very slow rate and prevent ice from forming. Here's what vitrified tissue would look like on a molecular, on a cellular scale. Warm, cold, vitrified. This is liquid nitrogen temperature, there's absolutely no difference. There's no ice in between the cells. And look how it looks on an actual micrograph of cells. You can see it looks just like normal tissue does, there's no ice damage. How does this work? Well, it works on this little loophole in physics called the liquid glass transition temperature. Now, basically what this is, is this little sweet spot right here, when you're cooling things down and you have cryoprotectants in them, you, you hit this little loophole that, al that allows these things to turn in, allows the tissue to turn into a glass as opposed to, a wa as opposed to frozen water or ice. This doesn't rupture anything because of the molecular structure of that glass. Here's how different it is, and it doesn't look that different on a molecular scale. On the left, you see frozen water. See how lattice and crystalline the molecules are? This is horrible inside cells. This wreaks terrible cellular damage. But look at this more amorphous structure of vitrified glass. Glass doesn't mean like glass you drink out of. It's just, I'm talking about it solely from a molecular basis. Because it's amorphous, it doesn't cause the ice damage. It doesn't cause the cracking. It doesn't cause anything. You've displaced all the water with the cryoprotectant chemicals when you cool things down. Okay, it just is a couple of, little bit of a difference on the screen. What's it mean in reality? Well, here are two kidneys. These are two rabbit kidneys. On the left, we have a frozen kidney, just like throwing grandma in the freezer. That's what happened to that kidney. The kidney is totally frozen. It's a block of ice. It is not viable. You cannot do anything to this kidney. It is dead. On the right, this kidney is still alive, but it's at negative 195 degrees Celsius. It's at liquid nitrogen temperature, and it's still metabolically viable. I know this sounds like science fiction, but it's not, and here's why. This kidney, because it was vitrified, was warmed back up. It was de-vitrified. And it was re-implanted back into the rabbit that donated it. The other kidney in the rabbit was taken out so that the rabbit survived and relied solely on the vitrified kidney that had been de-vitrified. So if this kidney had molecular damage, the rabbit would die. You couldn't, do, you couldn't filter your blood. Well, the rabbit, as the time I'm speaking now, is still alive. This rabbit survived only on this one kidney with no major changes in blood urea, nitrogen, or creatinine, which are two big things in the blood that you look for to see how well the kidneys are filtering, no significant change, and the organ was at open nitrogen temperature for over a week. 
So you can be metabolically viable as an organ. So this makes, this makes great sense. Okay, so we're trying to extend your life by vitrifying your whole body. We devitrify you. Your organs will probably work. That's great. But what about the most important organ? What about your brain? Who's to say it's going to be viable if just aside from pumping blood through it? The brain is way more complicated than the nephrons in a kidney. Well, thankfully, there's experimental evidence for that, too. This is a rat hippocampus. Hippocampus is a part of the brain. It's not right in the back. It's in front of the occipital lobe, which is right here on the back. You can't really see it. It'd be in the middle. And it processes short-term memories into long-term memories and then pulls things back out into working memory. You don't have this. You don't have any short-term You only have short-term memory. You don't have long-term memory. You can't access anything. You're practically vegetative. So the hippocampus is hugely important. On the top, we see neurons at a microscopic scale from the rat hippocampus. They we're not frozen. They're in perfect shape. Over here, we see vitrified and rewarmed neurons. Over here, we just see frozen neurons. This is just like the kidney, right? It's completely frozen. This looks great. This doesn't look great. What, aside from the fact that it looks good, can we prove about it? You can't take out a brain and re-implant it without killing something. So how did we figure out that this actually worked? Well, when you fire electrical signals into brain tissue, it's supposed to fire back a very narrow range of electrical signals in response to that. There are very few things that it can say back, quote unquote, that mean it's still viable, that mean it can still process information, that mean it can still store memory. That has to be an electrical signal just like you get from an EKG of the heart. So the scientists hook this little slice of hippocampus after it had been rewarmed up to electrodes. They fired a specific signal into it and got back the exact neurological signal they were hoping for, which demonstrates that you can vitrify brain tissue and devitrify it and have it still be viable. So the usefulness of all of this, number one, is organ transplantation. Right now, organs are viable for 24 hours. That's, that's horrible. It's absolutely terrible. This would make an organ viable for longer than the universe is set to exist using current math. So obviously longer than anyone could possibly need it. And of course, life extension by cryopreservation. Somebody dying of a terrible cancer could be cryopreserved and rewarmed at a future date when the cancer could be cured, when some when senescence is cured, when aging is cured when these types of metabolic degradative processes are cured and can be reversed or stopped. So it's good for life extension and for organ transplantation. <coughs> now, the technology is a bit far out on here. We still have to wait for nanotechnology and, and things to repair molecular damage that is done by vitrification. However, uh, current estimates say probably 50 to 100 years for that, and this preserves for a lot longer than that. So we've seen what chronics basically is, what the usefulness of it is. We've seen how death isn't really death. We've seen how being dead in a legal sense doesn't mean you're metabolically dead. It means you're still totally viable if you just intervene in time. There are more examples we don't have time for for slowing down metabolism, but it's true. And we've seen the applications of this. We've seen how you can cool down tissue, rewarm it, and still keep it metabolically viable. Thank you guys.